My name is Richard Anthony Armendares. I live here in San Antonio. I've lived here since 05. I grew up in El Paso, Texas. Um, I lived on the border of El Paso and Juarez. Um, my backyard was literally in New Mexico. It was really amazing as a, a young person that grew up in El Paso. Um, you had a Juarez, you know, minutes away. And m many of my family members lived there and we visit them, visited them on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So on the weekends we spoke Spanish. During the week we spoke just English. And it was that duality, I think, that kind of flavored my aesthetic and conceptual kind of understanding of the world. Initially, I wanted to fly a plane. I was in ROTC for about two years. Then I moved into art therapy because, and that was back before you could get a degree in art therapy. You had to major in one psychology and then minor in another, like art. And then you had to be your own, um, you have to be basically self-employed. You have to be an independent contractor. And I didn't sort of dig that idea of like having to kind of deal with business in that way. So after a couple of years, I switched to being an art historian. And, and then all the while I was taking art classes. You know, I, I had taken art classes since I was very young. And, and then it was like, well, I really, you know, I like making the work more than I like talking about the work. I like a whole lot more. And at that point, I had so many credits, so many studio classes that I was like, well, I can just switch over to being a studio major. And so I got my BFA. Uh, I transferred from El Paso, from UTEP to UTSA for a couple of years. I transferred in not knowing how to paint, literally not knowing how to mix paint, how to load a brush, how to uh, create illusionistic imagery, you know, on canvas. And it didn't matter because I had developed an aesthetic that was a little bit more like collage. And I basically taught myself how to paint because that's where my ideas were going. And initially I was doing photographs of um, ofrendas and, and altares that I would make for my house. And I would make paintings based on those. Those graduated into, you know, trying to make references to um, landscape painting because landscape painting was a thing of bad art. Like I love the idea of, of, you know, starving artist sales and, you know, wish you were here cards, you know, like I just thought that that was like terrible art, you know, and I wanted, I wanted to figure out a way to infuse it with some kind of, of vitality, like new meaning. And I literally did years and years of experimentation of, of painting and carving and painting back in and carving and, and, and doing all sorts of different steps until I finally graduated and found um, a method of working that I feel conveys my idea both with the carving and with the painting. And so the painting is made in a very traditional way, like glazes, thin, very, very traditional. Uh, the carving is done with a power tool, so it's sort, sort of non-traditional. And I love that I'm scarring or tattooing or, or marring the beautiful landscape with a mark that can never be taken away. What I love about the work right now is that I don't know a whole lot about it. it it's mixing and matching a couple of different things that I typically do. And so the combination of the things um, I don't know if, if people are going to pick up that is really, really kind of off the wall for me, but it feels very off the wall for me. I'm coupling some phrases that are original phrases that are referential of, uh, conjunto, Tejano, uh, country music. Um, but they're a little bit more, uh, I think optimistic. Um, they have a little bit more of a silver lining, these paintings, than some of the, the work that I've done in the past. That's just sort of some of the thoughts I have, I guess, about this, um, this circle show, this curve show, on the curve.